In today's video, I'm unpacking 12 classic narcissistic sex patterns. Mm-hmm. You don't want to miss this. Let's do it. Hey friends, Tammy M. Joyce here, Empowerment Life Coach, creator of the Freedom Class and the Ascension Class. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. Please take a second to say hello and introduce yourself in the comment section below. And if you're back, of course, welcome back. Thanks for showing up and for tuning in. Either way, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be sure to be notified when I post new videos throughout the week. So let's dive into 12 classic narcissistic sex patterns that you'll undoubtedly experience when you find yourself involved with someone who lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism. Number one, right out of the gate, you'll find that the narcissist tends to be overly confident and maybe even grandiose about their sexual prowess specifically. They'll want you to know that this is an area of mastery for them in their mind anyway. And that confidence and grandiosity will be evident by just how seductive they are. So hear me, because this is a major red flag when you're first getting to know someone. People who land on the spectrum of destructive narcissism are not only overly confident with regards to their ability and performance in the bedroom, they'll be highly seductive, meaning they will literally use seduction quite confidently as their primary means of connecting and bonding with you. And the reason they do this is because they are fundamentally incapable of bonding in a real, genuine, and healthy way. Seduction and manipulation and their own delusions of grandeur in this area are all they've got. So instead of working to foster healthy love and intimacy like other relatively sane and healthy adults would, Instead, it will be all about the games, the chase, the challenge of the initial conquest while manipulating and seducing you in the process. And all from a place of being overly confident and often far more confident that they have any business being in reality. Furthermore, narcissists are not only overly confident and incredibly seductive, they're also super charismatic and charming when highly motivated and they'll use their seductive charm and charisma to manipulate you into satisfying their sexual wants, needs, desires, and fantasies even. So buyer beware, in the early stages of a relationship with a destructive narcissist, that period commonly known as the love bombing stage, and for very good reason, they are likely to shower you with all kinds of attention and praise, and maybe even gifts and grand gestures and what appears to be thoughtful acts of kindness and consideration. And it's all an illusion. They're doing this for no other reason than to reel you in and get you hooked as quickly as possible on false hope and empty promises, only for you to realize that the narcissist is really only interested in themselves, only care about themselves and their own wants and needs their own desires, and actually in reality cares very little about you. So be careful when you come across someone who is overly confident in this area. This is not a red flag you want to ignore. Another red flag you don't want to ignore when it comes to classic narcissistic sex patterns is this. They move fast, way too fast. Not always, but certainly often enough. Narcissists will want the relationship to move at the speed of light. And the big red flag you don't want to ignore is that you'll find they get mad at you when you don't or won't move as fast as they'd like. Move at their pace. Your unwillingness to cooperate and let them set the pace of the relationship will frustrate them to no end. And this will probably be the first time you see the mask slip. So pay attention. You say no, not now, or anything to the effect of I'm not ready yet, well, that'll absolutely threaten the narcissist's incredibly fragile and false perception of themselves and their overinflated ego. Your desire to go at a pace that's healthy, safe, and comfortable for you will be perceived as rejection by anyone who lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism. And although they may try to hide it, if you're paying attention, you'll see the anger, 
frustration, and downright emotional immaturity. This is when they're likely to expose the extent to which they are so easily slighted as well as angered, in particular when they aren't getting their way. So whatever you do, don't ignore this red flag. Number three, they'll expect praise and lots of it. Narcissists are fully addicted to the idea of being viewed as special and superior in every possible way. And for this reason, you'll find that they have an insatiable need to be praised and idealized. And it'll be a bottomless pit, a literal black hole of need, one that can never be satisfied, no matter how hard you try to please them or appease them. The narcissist will expect you to demonstrate to them in big and small ways the extent to which you believe that they are, without question, the best thing ever. The best person, the best partner, the best lover. Regardless of how they actually perform in the bedroom, in their mind, they're the best and you better be prepared to reflect that back to them or you'll be dealing with one very unhappy little camper to say the least. Again, in the beginning stages of the relationship, they are likely to go to great lengths to convince you that they are simply amazing. Frankly, because more than anything, they really need the validation. But more than that even, as I said before, they want you hooked and fast. If you don't give them adequate praise and adulation, whatever they consider to be adequate, they'll not only pout, and act out both passively and aggressively. They'll also begin to withdraw and sooner or later become abusive even, you know, because you aren't living up to their standards of perfection. It's the inverted reality we live in when we're enmeshed to any degree with people who land on the spectrum of destructive narcissism. Number four, they're focused entirely on the physical. That's right, another sure sign you're having sex with a narcissist is you'll notice that they'll be focused entirely on physical performance during sex with zero concern for any real emotional connection, true intimacy, tenderness, or vulnerability. Now, what's interesting is the narcissist will expect that their partner will be physically and aesthetically perfect even when the narcissists themselves are far from perfect in this regard. And they'll have little, if any, tolerance for what they see as flaws or imperfection in your physical appearance, as well as your sexual performance. And of course, only the narcissist gets to decide what the appropriate standards of perfection are. And if you're with the narcissist for any length of time, you'll quickly notice that the narcissist's standards of perfection will be a constant moving target. No matter how hard you try, how lean, fit, or stunning you may be, it will never be good enough for the narcissist. And we wonder why our self-esteem takes such a beating when we're involved with people on the spectrum of destructive narcissism. Now, comment below and let me know whether or not you've experienced any of these classic narcissistic sex patterns. Let me know in the comments section below. And if you're struggling with narcissistic abuse in any area of your life, you're likely an excellent candidate for my eight week transformational coaching program, The Freedom Class. If that's of interest to you, there's a link in the description below this video where you can apply to see if you qualify for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with either myself or a member of my team. Number five, narcissists enjoy dominance and control. In fact, they need it. When it comes to being involved in a sexual relationship with a narcissist, what you'll quickly learn is they're in charge. Again, it's not that they simply like to be in control, they need to be in control. Furthermore, they'll use the pretense of so-called love and connection, as well as sexual intimacy, to manipulate, dominate, and control you. Number six, narcissists are never satisfied. Once they have you where they want you, the rules of the game will change without warning and it will quickly shift to a sick game of constant moving goalposts, as I mentioned earlier, and a perpetual state of dissatisfaction on their part. No matter what you do or how hard you try, you'll never be good enough. You'll never do it right. Get it right. You'll never be what they consider to be good enough. Unless, of course, you're being love bombed or hoovered and manipulated back into the toxic abuse cycle. 
And if you want to learn more about narcissistic love bombing and hoovering, you can watch this video here and this video here. The thing is, narcissists are highly critical. Another red flag you won't want to ignore in the early stages of the relationship. Now, they may be able to hide that fact well at first, but they won't be able to keep their critical nature hidden for long. It's how they maintain their false sense of superiority and attempt to dominate and control you by beating you down over time, chipping away at and undermining any sense of self-worth and self-esteem you might have. Again, they use their perpetual state of dissatisfaction with you, your looks, and your performance as a means of manipulating, dominating, and controlling you. Narcissists have a strong need to be seen as superior to others in order to compensate for their own deeply buried fear, guilt, shame, insecurity, and feelings of inadequacy. So when it comes to sex with a narcissist, they'll criticize you and your performance in bed in an attempt to make you feel inferior and gain a greater sense of control over you. And the thing you need to understand is this. Narcissists actually enjoy demeaning you. They are condescending, mean, and cruel even. They'll criticize, diminish, demean, and devalue you with zero restraint or remorse. They'll go out of their way, both directly and indirectly, to show you just how insignificant and inferior you are. Number seven, narcissists are selfish and self-centered in the extreme. They will always prioritize their own comfort and sexual satisfaction, regardless of the negative or detrimental impact on you. So if you hear nothing else, understand this. The narcissist is only ever concerned with themselves, their own best interest and well-being, no matter how much they may pretend otherwise. They're not givers, not in any real way. Rather, they are parasitical takers, vampiric in nature, energetically and otherwise. Given the opportunity, they will exploit you in every possible way, use and abuse you. Unless, of course, giving benefits them somehow. So, again, these are red flags not to ignore when you're becoming involved with someone. Because of their lack of empathy, sex with a narcissist will be all about meeting their needs. They'll be fixated on what they want without ever, ever so much as asking about your preferences or your comfort. Number eight, they'll use withholding as a means of manipulating, dominating, controlling, and punishing you. That and a rational and emotionally immature outbursts and tirades when they aren't getting their way. More than anything though, the destructive narcissist will use withholding behavior as a means of punishing you. For what exactly? Who knows? But you'll know it's happening because the rejection will cut deep. It's real and it's painful. And that's the point. Furthermore, they'll also deliberately ignore you after sex. Remember, a narcissist uses sex as a means of validating themselves and their false sense of superiority. If you're cooperative enough, you've fulfilled their addictive compulsive need for admiration and attention. So this means that after sex, they don't need you for anything. Their needs are met for now anyway. And now that they don't need anything from you in their mind, there's no need to pay attention to you. Ignoring you is very much how the narcissist withholds intimacy and hides behind a big impenetrable wall one you'll never get through. So stop hurting yourself trying. Narcissists are fundamentally incapable of true intimacy, real connection, which is one reason being in any kind of relationship with these people is so painful, confusing, and frustrating, in particular for people who are highly empathic. Number nine, narcissists lack healthy limits and boundaries. In addition to being incapable of true intimacy, in addition to being incapable of establishing a healthy, loving connection, narcissists are also absolutely incapable of respecting you, your personal life, never mind your privacy and the sanctity of the relationship. Telling others intimate details about your sex life is par for the course when you're involved with a destructive narcissist. And they'll go so far as to make up elaborate, perverted, even bizarre and kinky stories 
lying outright about you and what actually went on in the bedroom. And more often than not, this is nothing more than classic narcissistic attention-seeking behavior. But they'll also do this for no other reason than the sheer satisfaction of making themselves look and feel good, in their own mind anyway, while titillating their audience of sick enablers, while also making themselves sound far more virile than they actually are in reality. Once the high of the initial seduction phase has worn off, more often than not, they're a complete letdown and utter disappointment in the sack. In addition, if they can make you look or sound bad, if they can assassinate your character and destroy your reputation in the process, through the telling of tall tales, no matter how untrue, cruel, or bizarre even, well, that'll be a total bonus for the narcissist. Number 10 on the list of classic narcissistic sex patterns is infidelity. That's right. You know you're dealing with a destructive narcissist when they feel entitled to cheat and, of course, lie to your face about the cheating. You have to be pretty empathy impaired, if not lacking in conscience entirely, to be able to pull this off, considering the lying required to blatantly cheat the way narcissists do. People with a conscience can't just wash it off, go home, and look their partner in the face pretending to be someone they're not. But narcissists can. And like I said earlier, narcissists have a high need for validation, affirmation, and approval, which they try to satisfy through sex. This means that a narcissistic partner will be likely to stray from the relationship repeatedly in order to seek out additional validation and approval from other sex partners. Now that said, in my experience, not all narcissists cheat. But again, in my experience, the vast majority do. And they do, they cheat, because they can. Easily far more easily than your average person with empathy and a conscience would ever be able to. The thing is, narcissists don't feel guilt, shame, or remorse as a result of inflicting this particular brand of betrayal trauma on those they supposedly care for. In fact, they'll often go so far as to blame their partner for the infidelity instead of taking responsibility for the very real pain that they've caused. Which leads me to my next point, number 11. Narcissists believe they are entitled, entitled to lie, entitled to cheat, entitled to want sex when they want it, how they want it, and with whom. They are entitled, no matter the consequences or negative impact on those they claim to care about. Narcissists actually believe they deserve sex, are entitled to it, and have a right to demand it whenever they want, even if you're sleeping, working, or otherwise occupied. If the narcissist wants it, as far as they're concerned, they're entitled to it. They expect sex on demand. They especially expect sex in return for gifts, favors, or anything else they deem to have done for you. And if necessary, they're perfectly willing to trick, deceive, or guilt trip you into having sex with them. And on their timeline, it's a game for them, again. It's all about their own sexual gratification with little to no consideration for your comfort, your wants, your needs, desires, wishes, your well-being for that matter. And if you dare assert a boundary or express a legitimate want or need, they'll do and say whatever it takes to make you feel bad for having done so. They may even go so far as to tell you that you're the one who's high maintenance or you're being selfish if you don't give them what they want when they want it. And last but not least, number 12, not always, but certainly often enough, narcissists are full-blown sex addicts, in full denial that they are, of course, or that they have any sort of problem. Naturally, they, and their highly inappropriate, often completely addictive compulsive acting out sexually, isn't a problem, for them anyway. Now, clearly, not all narcissists are sex addicts but a lot of them are. And to be honest, sex addiction is a subject that's worthy of an entire video of its own. But suffice to say, some of the classic signs of sex addiction are, for example, engaging in sexual acts with multiple partners. In other words, sexual promiscuity, infidelity, and or wanting to bring others into the sanctity of your relationship. 
and they'll minimize and be dismissive of the obvious risks of their promiscuous behavior, like, for example, the cost of their infidelity or their obsession with pornography, while simultaneously having less and less interest in you. And like any addict, active in their addiction, they'll be fully unwilling to discuss the problem and instead are more likely to become angry, defensive, and extremely critical if you dare even attempt to broach the subject with them. And guess who will be to blame for all of it? You guessed it, you, I promise you. If this is going on in your relationship, you are not the issue. You may need help, but that does not make you the problem. Give yourself the gift and get the support and guidance that you need in order to be able to take care of yourself no matter what is going on with the narcissist. You deserve at least that and so much more. It's time now. And on that note, I'm going to call it a wrap. But before I go, you should know the Ascension class is open for enrollment. Now, this is for you if you're ready and able to invest in yourself, you're ready to shift your identity, master the law of attraction, heal your relationship with money, and put a full stop end to the limiting beliefs and self-sabotaging behaviors that are holding you back and preventing you from living your best life. If you're ready to reinvent yourself from the inside out, create your dream life by design, and finally become the you you were always meant to be, click the link in the description below this video to apply to see if you qualify for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with either myself or a member of my team.